Hey everybody, it is Nick here, Senior Dream Curator at the American Family Insurance Dream Bank, where we believe in the power of dreams and we are committed to helping you pursue yours. Now in today's crafting video, we are going to actually be doing some mixed media portraits using a product called Gesso that is normally used to prime canvases. So we'll go over what Gesso is, how you can use it, uh, and the other supplies you'll need to do this craft. Here is an example. I'm really excited to share this one with you today. So thank you so much for being here, sticking with me, and we will get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over the supplies here <clears throat> that you're going to need today. So first we're going to need some Gesso, which it's spelled G-E-S-S-O. This is a big old bucket of it. You do not need this much. It comes in much smaller containers, almost like a paint bottle. Um, gesso is actually very similar to white acrylic paint, but it gives you more of a texture when it dries. And that's going to be important because we're actually going to want to draw on top of it once it dries. And it has a little bit more of like a tooth to it. So gesso is normally used for priming canvases. So if you go to do a painting and the canvas is white, that means it's been painted with gesso already. Uh, normally canvases would be more of like a tan or like a natural color before it's primed. So if you do see like a white canvas, that means it's been primed with gesso and that means it's ready to paint on. So that's the purpose of gesso, but there's a lot of different ways to use it. And so you're gonna need some of that. Um, and it's, relatively inexpensive. You can pick it up at any like craft or hobby or, or art store or something like that. So, and it'll last you a long time. So aside from the gesso, you're going to need a picture that we're going to be modifying. And I've found that black and white pictures work the best. So if you can find one in a magazine, this one I found in an old photography book. I just tore the page out. Uh, I just liked this picture. Um, you can print one out too if you can't find one, you don't have any resources like that. Just find a black and white picture you like and print one out. Um, so, and it, it'll work on computer paper too. This is kind of like a glossy paper that should work as well. Because like I said, the gesso, we're gonna put a coating on this, will actually make it easy to, to draw over. Um, and now if this paper is really thin, I would suggest backing it on something. So this is like a piece of cardstock that I'll probably glue this down to, so that way it's just a little sturdier. Uh, you're always going to want to have some paper towels on hand, just in case things get a little messy. Protect your work surface. I have the mat here that's protecting my wooden table. And then something to draw with. I have a pen and a pencil. Nothing super fancy. And then a paintbrush, a sponge, brush. Like, I don't know if we're actually going to use these. We might not, because I usually typically like to use a card, like an old credit card or something like that. This is an old gift card uh, that has no balance on it anymore. So I just use it like a like a tool now or like an art supply. Okay, so something to apply the gesso with, something to draw with, a picture that we're going to be modifying, the gesso itself, and this that we're going to back the picture on. So I'm actually going to get uh, some glue, I think. We'll cut this out, we'll mount it to this, and then we can get started. All right, so I am back, and I guess we can add to our supply list some scissors and some glue, too. This is just a glue stick. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this out. We'll get our scraps out of here. Now I will mention there's a few ways too that you can even do this. Like this, for example, was a photo out of a magazine. It was a big black and white ad. And you can see here, um, this torn edge, that's actually the edge of the magazine page. Okay. And so then it was a picture of, of this face here and her hair, which I painted over. Um, but then it was just torn along this edge and then glued down. And then I just cut this out. Okay, now the paper I glued it down to, I had done some watercolor work on previously. Uh, I do have a video on watercolor if you want to see how I did this technique. This is the cellophane technique um, to get these colors here because I just wanted some sort of fun background uh, outside of that. So this one I just tore out. So it doesn't have to be a square edge like this, for example. You could tear the edge. You could cut this, um, this person out entirely and remove the background. But I'm just going to leave it on for now. And then we will take our glue stick. So 
there's a lot of decisions you can make while you're doing this. Like if I glue this down just right in the corner, or I can glue it down in the middle and tear out around it if I want a different shape or something like that. Um, this one, maybe I'll just leave like a little border around it like so. Mm. Make sure that's firmly attached. All right, so we're gonna cap our glue stick so it doesn't dry out on us. Okay, and now I am going to cut this out and kind of keeping that, that white border that I put around those two sides and do something maybe similar there. I mean, then this itself can even be glued into like a book or a journal or made into a, uh, like a journal card or a greeting card for somebody. I mean, so that already looks cool. I mean, you know, just taking something out of an old book and essentially uh, gluing it down to just some backing so it's a little sturdier. Now it's more like a card. Okay, so now we're going to start with the gesso. So we're going to get a little bit of this. Like I said, I have like a half gallon here. You definitely don't need that much. And some people even apply it with their fingers. I'm going to get a paper towel ready. And I'm going to, let's see if I can zoom in here on what I'm doing. Okay. So what you could do is just dip your finger in the gesso. See that? And then just kind of put it on here. And the goal is to add the gesso in a way where you can still see through it, but that you have, you still have a layer of gesso that's kind of thin. What I like to do is taking a card and I'll dip it in the gesso a little bit. So I have some, if you can see that, uh, along the edge there of this card. And then I just kind of lay the card pretty like flat, like flat to the surface and spread it on. And then you can scrape off some if you need to. But essentially we want to get a layer of gesso on while still being able to see through it to some degree. Okay. I'm going to clean off my card here. We'll zoom back out. on the mat so we'll just clean that up and then we'll put the lid on our gesso I think half the battle is just keeping stuff from drying out when you're an artist trying to especially if you buy supplies in bulk like this big thing trying to make it last as long as you can so we're gonna let this dry and then I will check back in with you in just a minute all right, so I am back and this is dry and you can feel now it has like a, a different texture. It's not glossy anymore. Um, it's a little more matte and that's gonna be easier to draw on. Also, because we've added glue stick and gesso to this, this paper is wanting to warp a little bit. So I always just try to train it back uh, to the, the shape that I want it. So it's a little more flat. Um, also, you know, if this is gonna then be glued down to something or be incorporated into another piece of artwork, um, it'll get flat that way too, or you could press it or something like that. But anytime you're adding things that are, you know, have some moisture to them to paper, it's going to want to warp. It's just the way it is. All right. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right. So now what I like to do, and this is the part where I say this makes really good practice, because if you want to practice drawing faces or drawing anything, really, this is a really good technique to do that. It's kind of like using tracing paper, but with that, where you still have two separate things, you have the tracing paper, you have the drawing underneath that you're tracing. This is one thing. So you have like a final product that isn't as fragile or as delicate as tracing paper. So there's lines here that I'm going to want to follow. And it's really nice to learn where these things live on the face, like how far apart eyes are, where the shadows are. And now with this layer of gesso over it, you know, you can kind of see those things a little more clearly. Okay. So one thing I like to do is just maybe outline the face a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so there is, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. There's an ear here, and then I can see a jawline coming down this way, and a chin. All right, so I'm just following along, and sometimes, like, I can't really see where her neck is. I can't see a line there, so I'm just going to have to guess some of this. So pretty much from the bottom of the ear, this usually curves down like that. Right, and so that looks reasonable. And then there's a pretty strong shadow here on the side of the nose, this line right here. And that leads right up into the eyebrow. So I'm just picking out shapes and just tracing them. Okay. So I'm going to follow the bridge of the nose. To the nostril. Another nostril there. We'll kind of fill in the eyebrows a little bit. Give them more of a shape. You see that? So now I'm just really just drawing on top of this and kind of learning the shape of a face that way. That's the upper lip. The bottom lip. Sort of the inside of an ear. And now hair, I've taken a lot of liberties with as far as what I do. So like this one, I just drew some crazy hair and painted over the whole thing. So, you know, just some curly cues. I went in with some acrylic paint. I painted the whole thing kind of yellow at first. And then I did some dark where there's like shadowy areas. I chose a light source. So say like if the light was coming from this side, each piece of hair would be light along this left edge and then darker along this right edge. So you can see I went in with some white and put highlights along those edges there around the curly cues and everything. Okay. This one too, I've sketched in some of the shadows. So I could see where they were, but I sketched them in with a pencil and you can see my pencil lines here. And I think that adds a nice effect. You know, you can tell from this nose and the nostrils though, that this is a photograph. You know, if you look a little closely. And then I also embellished it with um, red acrylic paint and some white dots of paint here for the lips, some blue acrylic paint for the eye and some white dots there for a shine. Okay, so just adding a white dot is a really effective way of making a shine. So to that end, we can pick out some shadows here. So, and I like making shadows just with sort of lines that are side by side like this. So I'm just going along the edge and adding some lines in there. So you can see that these lines along the side here. Okay. Now this whole side of the face is pretty shadowy. So we can add in some shadows here. So you see, I just put those lines in. They're all going in the same direction along in here. So kind of just like a C shape. Now we can pick out some eye shapes. All right. So now what I might do is use a pen and really pick out certain features that I want to highlight. So probably the bridge of the nose is very strong. And you don't have to use pen. You know, I just use it to sort of separate out a little bit um, the pencil and areas that I want to highlight. So eyebrows are usually a a strong focal point in portraits. Eyelashes or eyeliner. And if your pen stops wanting to write, sometimes it'll scrape up some of the gesso. Just clean the tip of it off. Let me 
maybe don't press as hard as I was pressing it. I'm going to add a little eyelash at the end, like a little wing. So now here's the part where you can start to get creative, you know, you can embellish these things. And draw the eye in, and draw a pupil in there. Same over here. Right, so now it's starting to look like a drawing. It's looking less and less like a photo, and looking more like a drawing, which is kind of the, the goal here. We'll do the lips. All right, and then we can fill some of this in with a little more shading. We go a little darker. I'm going to leave a little light patch on the bottom lip there. So it kind of looks like a shine. We can do some shading on the neck. You can see that there's kind of a darkness to this side. And you can also do, so that's called hatching. When you do shading, that's like just lines going the same direction next to one another. You can do cross hatching too, where you draw some lines going the opposite direction. And it kind of looks like, let's see if I can get this to focus here. It looks like a little grid right there. And that makes an even darker shadow. So usually where the darkest shadows are, it's either just straight filled in or cross hatched. And where it gets a little lighter, you do hatching and you space the lines apart to be more light or cluster them together to be darker. Okay, so now if you wanted to, you could do like I did and create some big crazy hair or something like that, you know. Um, this, I mean, she's got some really fun kind of like curls up here. So I mean, you can kind of just sketch some of these in. Maybe I want a little hanging piece of hair down here, a little ringlet. Uh, so now we're just picking out these shapes, highlights and lowlights. And it just gives you a surface to draw on that has like a picture in the background so you can practice. And I think that's starting to look pretty cool. And then if you wanted to, like I said, there's a million ways to do this. This I added in some color, which kind of stands out against the black and white photograph. Makes it look pretty unique. I added my own hair. Um, I put this on a background that was different. So I'm starting to do mixed media here. I've got acrylic, I've got a photograph, I've got watercolor, you know, and so this is all these elements coming together. Even I believe these white spots I probably did with a white gel pen because I just had a little more control. You have pencil, you have pen, so a lot of different ways to go about this. So I hope you try this one at home. I hope you can get your hands on some gesso. It's pretty easy to find, like I said, and I'll be really curious to see what kind of things you make. So please try this one, share it with the group. If you're not familiar, we do have a Facebook group. It is on the Dream Bank Madison Facebook page, and the group is called Crafting Community. We're doing a lot of really fun stuff there. Uh, so hopefully you check it out try this and share it. I'd love to see what you end up doing. So thank you so much and we will see you next time.